What is up guys, it is Steady Chaos Productions. So as a relatively new PC gamer, I've only had my 3080 since about February of this year. So what, seven, eight months? That's the amount of time I've spent PC gaming. Prior to that, I'm in my 30s now. Prior to that, it was all console gaming. So I didn't really know much about PC gaming and it's not until somebody commented on one of my videos on my YouTube channel that not only should you be using G-Sync for the smoothest possible gaming experience and a gaming experience where you don't have tearing, right? But you should also be using vertical sync at the same time with a frame limiter. And I'm gonna talk about what all this means, but I never realized that you should be using V-Sync, G-Sync together with a frame limiter to get the smoothest possible gaming performance with incredibly low input lag and absolutely zero screen tearing. Now, what they recommend that I do is go to blurbusters.com, which is a great website for all things PC gaming, how to properly optimize G-Sync in your NVIDIA control panel or FreeSync if you have an AMD card, uh, how to get the lowest possible input lag, what vertical sync does, what G-Sync and FreeSync do, all that stuff. It's all on blurbusters.com and I've done tons of research there and I've come to the conclusion that indeed using V-Sync with G-Sync together with a frame limiter, and I'll explain what that all is, is the best way to go on PC. So if you are a veteran PC gamer, you probably already know all this. So consider this a refresher. But if you were a relatively new PC gamer, and I know there are a lot of new PC gamers out there, everybody's really interested in the new Ampere GPUs and the new 68 and 6900 XT AMD GPUs. So there's a ton of new PC gamers out there and they're not sure how to set up their GPUs and their displays to get the best possible PC gaming performance. This video is gonna go over all of that as quickly and efficiently as possible. Stay tuned. All right, so prior to Vertical Sync, which is a software solution that started coming out with relatively modern GPUs some time ago, we experienced in gaming what's called screen tearing. You see it down here. So screen tearing is a visual artifact in video display where a display device shows information from multiple frames in a single screen draw. The artifact occurs when the video feed to the device is not in sync with the display's refresh rate. So basically a GPU might be pushing as fast as it can, 130, 140 frames per second, and your TV might only be capable of 60 frames per second or 60 hertz. So basically the TV or display is showing multiple frames in one screen draw. So you might have half a frame on the bottom, half a frame on the top they're mismatched or they're cut that's just that's an example of screen tearing that's your gpu's frame rate going too quickly for the display to handle and it's getting out of sync so you have a tear so they came up with vertical sync otherwise known as v-sync what is v-sync short for vertical sync v-sync is the graphics technology responsible for syncing the frame rate of a game to the refresh rate of a monitor so the gpu will say okay well we're pushing 125 frames per second. That's way too fast for the TV to handle. It's gonna create tearing. So what the GPU will do is it'll go, okay, I'm gonna limit or throttle back the throughput or the frame rates from the GPU to 60 Hertz to match the display rate of the television or the monitor so you have no tearing. So the GPU, 60 frames per second, the TV, 60 Hertz. You have a one-to-one -one ratio, no tearing. The problem is, is with vertical sync, by default it has to throttle back the GPU's throughput or frame rate, and this can create the sensation of increased input lag or latency, which is definitely a no-go for competitive gamers. Yes, for the most part, it got rid of screen tearing, but it wasn't a perfect solution. So, NVIDIA and and AMD came along with their own solutions to prevent screen tearing, which were better versions of V-Sync, basically. And for NVIDIA, it's called G-Sync, and for AMD, it's called FreeSync. They're adaptive sync technology. They basically do the same thing. FreeSync from AMD is open source, meaning that pretty much any display can use it. Uh, there are no royalties associated with it. G-Sync is a proprietary adaptive sync technology that is not open source and is not royalty free. But what it does is it's developed by NVIDIA and it's aimed primarily at eliminating screen tearing and the need for software alternatives such as V-Sync, which we just talked about, right? G-Sync eliminates screen tearing by allowing a video's display refresh rate to adapt to the frame rate of the outputting device 
rather than the outputting device adapting to the display. So it's a much better solution because you're not throttling back the GPU like you would with V-Sync. So you're not getting as much input latency or lag while you're simultaneously reducing any kind of tearing. So if the GPU is showing 79 frames per second in one instance, the display will show 79 frames per second. If it jumps to 86 frames per second, the GPU, then the display 86 frames per second. You're always a one-to-one -one GPU frame rate to uh, display rate of your television or your monitor so you get no screen tearing. Now the reason you want to use G-Sync with vertical sync is something known as frame time variances, okay? Now blurbusters.com explains this exclusively. They have an FAQ section, G-Sync 101, closing FAQ. Link in the description below if you're interested in going here and reading it. I highly suggest you do go and read it. But you can see here, wait, why should I enable V-Sync and G-Sync again? And why am I still seeing tearing with G-Sync enabled and V-Sync disabled? Well, the short answer is frame time variances. So if you take the example of a 144 hertz display, so that just means you have a monitor, for example, that can show 144 frames per second or has 144 hertz capabilities. Hertz frame rates, they're one to one, right? They mean the same thing, basically. So at 144 hertz, a single frame takes 6.9 milliseconds to display. So if the frame rate is 144 per second, then the average frame time of 144 frames per second is 6.9 milliseconds per frame. In reality, however, there are some frame time variances in there. So frame time from frame to frame varies. So just because an average frame rate of 144 per second has an average frame time of 6.9 milliseconds per frame, doesn't mean all 144 of those frames in each second amount to an exact 6.9 milliseconds per. Stay with me now. One frame could render in 10 milliseconds, the next could render in six milliseconds, but at the end of each second, enough will hit the 6.9 milliseconds render target to average 144 frames per second. So what happens when just one of those 144 frames renders in say 6.8 milliseconds instead of 6.9 milliseconds? Well, the affected frame becomes ready too early and begins to scan itself into the current scan out cycle before the previous frame has a chance to fully display, which is known as tearing. So even if you are in your television or your monitor's G-Sync range, so for example, the LG C1 has an adaptive G-Sync range of 20 frames all the way up to 120 frames. Even if G-Sync is actively working within those frames, you can still experience frame time variances, which can lead to tearing, even with G-Sync or FreeSync engaged. This, this just blew my mind. So basically what vertical sync does is it mitigates these frame time variances. Blurbusters goes on to say, G-Sync plus V-Sync on allows the module to time delivery of the affected frames to start on the next scan out cycle, which lets the previous frame finish in the existing cycle and thus prevents tearing in all instances. And it's important to note here that using V-Sync in tandem with G-Sync or FreeSync does not increase input lag, right? That's the biggest negative or downfall of just using V-Sync on its own is that it throttles the GPU frame rate or throughput to match the refresh rate of the television, which can increase input lag. It can slow the GPU's performance. However, when you use G-Sync in tandem with V-Sync, as Blurbusters goes on to say right here, G-Sync plus V-Sync on only holds onto the affected frame for whatever time it takes the previous frame to complete its display. Virtually no input lag is added whatsoever. So the only thing to keep in mind now, there's one more step, right? Like I said, the LG C1, 20 to 120 frames per second, that's its adaptive range or its G-Sync range. Anytime a GPU pushes over that range so it goes over 120 frames per second the tv will say okay g-sync is no longer engaged because it's over the threshold right it's over 120 frames per second so what happens is g-sync effectively turns off and it reverts to v-sync behavior and then you're susceptible to tearing again you do not want tearing right so what you should do is you should cap your frame rate in your games to three frames just below the max refresh rate of your display so for the c1 
the max refresh rate or frame rate is 120 frames per second, as we said. You would use something like a program like Riva Tuna Statistics, and I'll have a link in the description below where you can download it free of charge. And you would set a frame rate cap at 117 frames per second, just three below the max refresh rate. So effectively, while you're playing, you're always between 20 frames per second and 117 frames per second. You're never going over, so you're not reverting to V-Sync, so you're not getting any tearing. And then within 20 to 117 frames per second, you have the adaptive technology VRR G-Sync adapting the display rate of the television or monitor to the output of the GPU, so you're getting one-to-one. -one. And then you're also using V-Sync to prevent any frame time variances or spikes within that G-Sync range. And so you don't get any tearing at all. And it is so smooth, it really is smooth. It really, really is. Now let me show you really, really quick how I go about engaging this. Now, you can engage V-Sync uh, within every single game if you want manually, but I think a better way to go about doing it is to right click on your desktop, go to the NVIDIA control panel, Set up G-Sync, make sure enable G-Sync, G-Sync compatible, enable for full screen, then go to manage 3D settings. And these settings are global, meaning that they will be in effect for every single program you use. You won't have to go into each separate game or program's menu settings and turn V-Sync on because they'll already be on within your NVIDIA control panel. So you just scroll down here, you go to vertical sync and you just turn it on. So now you have V-Sync on, you have G-Sync on, so you can get out of here. And then I have Riva Tuna Statistics, like I told you. Just open up MSI Afterburner. For me, Riva Tuna Statistics automatically opens. Here it is. Now, you see here frame rate limit. I have it at 357 because I have the PG259 ASUS ROG Swift gaming monitor, which is a 360 hertz monitor or 360 frames per second. So set your max frame rate at three frames below the max refresh rate of the display. So 360, set it to 357. LG C1, 120, set it to 117. Uh, 144 hertz monitor, set it to 141 frames per second cap, okay? And that way you're never going over your monitor's max refresh rate and you're never experiencing V-Sync, just full on V-Sync without G-Sync, and therefore you're never experiencing tearing. So this just opened my eyes. I, I always just figured V-Sync bad, V-Sync lag, V-Sync stutter, V-Sync antiquated. Don't use, just use G-Sync. No, no, no. Use V-Sync with G-Sync as Blurbuster says, and then use a program to set a frame rate cap at three frames below your television or your monitor's max refresh rate, and you will be a happy gamer. So let me know in the comment section down below how it works out for you if you end up trying this. I am really, really interested to see if you think it's smooth, just like butter, like I do. I think it's amazing. So that's gonna do it for me, guys. As usual, please subscribe to the channel for more content like this, all things tech, all things gaming, all things OLED TV, etc. unboxings. And please like the video, it helps me out a great deal. And we will see you guys later. Peace.